Okay, I'm Carlos, I'm the accidental chef. If you forget my name, it's on my jacket. That's the last clue you're gonna get from me. On your table, if you're lucky and you came early, there's a menu, a bio written by my mother, and uh, then the four recipes that I'm gonna prepare for you today, okay? We're gonna start, we're gonna have an appetizer, which is a crawfish wonton, which you will absolutely love. It's the easiest thing you'll ever make in your life besides my lemon sorbet. Um, then we're gonna have a gourmet salad with our house balsamic vinaigrette, which I will create for you. And then our lunch will be a stuffed rolled eggplant, which is, I call my Sicilian egg rolls. And I will make that, it's like manicotti, but instead of ma pasta, we use eggplant. Uh, first thing I wanna show you is I have sliced the eggplant into planks and put it in salt water. This is called gorging. The water's turning black. S eggplant is from the tobacco family. So I, as the gorging happens, it draws the nicotine out of the plant. That's why eggplant is sometimes bitter. It's because of the nicotine. You know when, you, when you're making eggplant rings and you put it in the oil and it just sort of absorbs all the oil like a sponge? When you gorge it, that doesn't happen. So let me show you how I peeled this eggplant real quick. I cut both ends off just so it makes it easier. And then I'm using a filet knife. A filet knife just means it has a thin blade and it's flexible, okay? I'm gonna cut off that gray side and discard. And then I'm gonna slice. And as I slice, I'm gonna hold my knife to the inside because I have the natural, this is the natural way our arm goes when we're cutting. So if we get a, make ourselves mindful to stay in, we'll stay on the same degree of thickness all the way down and create a nice thin piece. Now when I'm gonna gorge this in the salt water, it's gonna make it much more pliable. These have been already in there for a few minutes, so they're gonna do that. So we're gonna come back to that. All right? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start is I'm gonna put the heat on underneath my, um, this pot here. I don't want you to be confused because I do several things at a time, okay? So I'm gonna let that saute. That's the stick of butter. This is the crawfish wonton base. This is a stick of butter and a cup of the seasoning mix. That's that frozen pick sweet. It's in the freezer section. We have it in half pound, one pound, and five pound bags. Okay? All right. Now, I've taken whole peeled garlic, and I'm going to keep one tablespoon out for my salad dressing. Okay? Come so. And the rest will go in here in my hot olive oil, my warming olive oil, rather. I like extra virgin. Now, the reason they call it extra virgin is, is because it's the first press. Olive oil is pressed, and then the olive is taken from it. Anything after extra virgin doesn't necessarily have to be olive oil. 
If you've seen a product that's called olive oil with pumice and you get all excited because it's half the cost of extra virgin, that pumice is the pulp that's left after the, the olive oil has been pressed. Right here I've got my garlic. This is how you know you've sauteed your garlic enough. The aroma of the garlic is up. You are ready to uh, add whatever you're going to do. it. You don't want it to go more than that because it's going to, uh, it's going to, it burns very quickly. It goes from just okay to scorched in a real hurry. So I'm just going to add my crushed tomato. Crushed tomatoes are usually found at the bottom. Now this is a very simple sauce. My aunt, um, she thought, she called it my quick sauce because it's going to be ready in about 45 minutes, unlike my tomato gravy, which cooks for six hours. All right, I'm going to add, uh, what did it say? A tablespoon. I'm making a little more than the recipe. This is dry sifted basil. That's how you refer to something that comes in this kind of a setting, dried and sifted, because they sift it through a sifter that has a certain size. So, so the, all the size in here is uniform, okay? You can have a flake or you can have it sifted and those are the different sizes, okay? How do we like that? That's good. We're gonna leave that right there. Now, to my this, I'm going to add tomato paste. All right? It's, you know, there's a product that has a tomato um, a, in a tube combined, my roux. You know, to the Sicilians, the tomato paste was my great Cajun grandmother's roux. So I'm just going to pour that in there like that. Isn't that pretty? Just get that good and folded in. I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half, about a tablespoon of this Creole seasoning. I like the Tony Sashries. You really know when you have enough because you sneeze. <laughs> it's been my experience, okay? All right. I got that good and thing. Now, they say the more you brown your tomato paste, the less occurrence of acidity. You know, a lot of people, you know, we, gotta, we eat all our spaghetti and everything, and then we need bromo seltzer. But they say if you brown the tomato paste, because there's a big discussion, any of you who have Sicilian relatives or anything, yeah, there was those people that brown and those people that don't brown. That was what all the conversation was about, because, you know, we not like those people. But um, the, um, so that's the real secret of why we brown. It kind of takes some of the acidity out. I'm going to add about a cup and a half of water to this. I know this is about a cup and a half because it's the two-cup sauce pot, okay? And I'm just going to let that come to a boil. Okay, if it's not easy yet, let me know. Right? Is that pretty simple? Okay. Well, let's bake a cake. Y'all ready? Those of you who bake know two things. You preheat the oven when you start. I like to have all my ingredients at room temperature. And thirdly, don't answer the phone or the door and keep focused on the recipe. Otherwise, you will forget the soda and the cake will look like this. And it won't come out. All right? Let's begin. It says to sift. I think <clears throat> sifting is real old school. I don't know anybody that really sifts anymore, but I'm going to sift since it says sift. Okay. All right. We're going to take a cup and a half of flour. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Which is not a lot of flour for a cake. Although this is not a large cake. We're going to bake this in two eight-inch pans. Okay. So um, we're going to have about a, a morsel for each one of us but it'll be delicious. I mostly wanted to do the cake so you could see the icing because the icing is, is remarkable. Okay, we've got that. We've got this. How much baking powder? Two teaspoons. Three teaspoons and a tablespoon. So we've got one, half a cup. All right. So I'm going to sift, but in the, the uh, Cook's Illustrated, the American, uh, America's Test Kitchen, they talk about a lot of things. A couple of years ago over Christmas, I went away to my, my wife's family and I, I bought this one just on chocolate desserts. 
So I made five or six different chocolate desserts over the week I was there, and it talked about which chocolates were better, why, which pans are better, and why. So if you really want to know why, or just, you know, not know, uh, Cook's Illustrated is a great resource for that, okay? Any questions? All right. Then in there's sugar. All right. Y'all having fun yet? All right, there we go. And that, okay, what else? One cup of sour cream, eight ounces. Yeah, if you're using a Greek yogurt and it has a little more density, because you don't know why it's in the recipe, if it's for the density or just for the flavor. Okay, all right. I'm sorry? No, not in cream cheese, that's an entirely different consistency. I would say no. Okay, what else? How much milk, darling? One fourth cup of milk. All right, what's next? The eggs or the sugar? Add oil. Is the sugar should my sugar should already be in there, right? Did I put the sugar in there? I did. Great. Thank you. You see, that's why I need you people here. All right. And what else? Oil. A third of a cup right here, right now. Okay. This is great. All right. What else? What else goes in here? Of Crisco. Well, make sure when you buy shortening, it's vegetable shortening. Otherwise, you will have lard. Okay. Two spoons of vanilla. One teaspoon. You know, I've been watching a lot of the Barefoot Contessa, so I'm over vanillaing. Okay? All right. Okay, I think we've got all the dry and wet ingredients. Would y'all say yes? Yes? Yeah! Okay. Oh, eggs. One at a time. Okay? I'm going to bring my speed up just a little from about four to six my mixer says combine or stir and I'm going to bring it up a little bit further so that 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 um, Crisco will get smoother okay all right now we're ready to add I'm going to bring this back to down to combine so I don't wear it all right and it said a third of a cup at a time okay Any questions? All right. Get that a little more speed. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add my crawfish. Now, crawfish have to be fully cooked to be processed. You can't peel the raw crawfish. So they cook it to some degree. So when you're cooking with crawfish, you're adding it towards the end of your recipe because it's fully cooked. It doesn't have to really cook that long. It's because it's going to make um, it more tough, okay? Now what I'm trying to do here is reduce my liquid down a little bit more before I add the uh, amen. <clears throat> Look at that cake. Can you, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it is just a beautiful batter that's just doing lovely. I'm going to push down one time and then we're going to transfer, okay? You can lick the bowl if you can guess the number between 1 and 56, okay? All right. Any questions about that? How about this? that looking fun? Let's go ahead and um, put the cake in here. That's exactly right. As my daughter would say, TMI, Dad, TMI. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. All right. I've, I've ver I just kind of visually split this between the two pans. Usually a small pan like that, a, a cake mix, will be about a cup and a half to two cups of um, batter, okay? Wonderful. Do we know how long we have to bake? 
25 to 30 minutes, okay. We're going to stick that in there. Okay. Now, ooh, perfect. This is looking great. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off of that, and I'm going to add scads of parsley and onion tops. Okay? Don't be afraid. I'm going to stir that in. I love it. I'm just going to go ahead and put it. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it at your house. All right? How's that looking? And that's going to rest. I got my little sauce over here coming to a, a nice boil. Okay. Très bon chat. Okay. I'm going to use these little mini muffins. And I'm going to use um, the wontons. These are sold in the produce department. They're fresh, so they're always refrigerated. And I cut about this much of it off. I've just learned that that's a good portion for that. I'm going to spray my pan to make sure that they come out nicely and I'm not embarrassed in front of my friends. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I'm just going to stick that down in there. Okay. Maybe, Sheena, you can come uh, do these for me. At home, I have a little dobbler that goes with this um, thing that will just push down like that. But I just use my three fingers, and I get a good indentation. Okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could um, puree, or not pulse, the crawfish in your food processor before you add it to this and made it smaller so that you could put it in the wonton and close it up and make like a dumpling. One of the restaurants in town have they call it a seafood wonton and it's basically that and you can pull it up and close it up and make like a, a hobo pouch if you want. The icing for the cake because it's got to cool a little, okay? So it starts with a cup and three quarters of um, heavy cream. All right. And to that, I'm going to add the Cairo syrup, a third of a cup of dark Cairo syrup. Nothing. If it's corn syrup, usually there's... The dark Cairo, I'm not exactly sure that's a great question, but I just, I, I thought, you know, that they just made it dark by using a darker product, like a turbinado sugar or something they've added to it, but maybe not. Sorry. Okay. I've cleaned my mixing bowl out. I'm going to add 16 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, okay, to that. Come so. I'm going to bring my uh, heavy cream and Cairo to a boil. I'm going to put it on here and melt that. And then I'm going to let it cool. Then I'm just, it's the most amazing thing. I'm going to take my paddle beater and it's going to beat that into icing. She's almost done, so we, what we'll do is we'll just put a dollop of this mixture into the wontons, okay? And then we're going to put them in a hot oven. A hot oven is north of 400 on convection, 450 on convection for six minutes, okay? And it's just going to make my tips a little crunchy, and it's going to do that, all right? How about that for a beautiful sauce? Isn't that coming along nicely? The dry basil does two things. It um, gives flavor, but it also um, makes it a nice color. It will darken your color. All right, any questions about the wontons? Y'all getting a sense how easy that is? Is this easy? I mean, seriously, I mean, honestly. Come on, please. And then you can, you can make them smaller. If you're making a, uh, sometimes I take a pie dough 
and I cut a circle out of it and I put a little of that in there and then pinch it and make like an empanada with crawfish or with taco meat or whatever for the party. Baste them with a little egg white and, you know, pierce them and bake them, okay? Is this beautiful or what? I love it. Please agree with me. Thank you. All right, this is coming to a boil. And you know you gotta watch that because when milk gets to a certain temperature, it's not gonna take it long, okay? So be on the lookout, all right? And we just about got our whole kind of range top cleared off here. This is really good, all right? That's precarious because it's gonna be hot. So I'm gonna move it over here away from that heat. Slip this over here, okay. All right, while that's doing that, I'm gonna pull this out of the back and I'm gonna make my filling. All right, for my manna, this is standard. I call it standard filling because I use it for my, um, I use it for everything. My lasagna, for my baked ziti, for my uh, stuffed rolls, for my manicotti, for my ravioli, all of that, okay? Getting a nice boil here. That's about six or eight minutes from completion. So I'm going to take whole milk ricotta, ricotta, whatever, however, you know. Two pounds. I'm going to add to that uh, four cups of cheese. I'm using mozzarella, and because I could, I got a mix of a provolone, just so I'd have a little mix, okay? Uh, some Romano. I'm hoping it's Romano. I found it in the fridge. Um, three eggs, about an egg and a half a pound on the cheese. Some salt and red pepper. And whenever I make a, this is like a bishmal, you know, sauce, I always use a little nutmeg whenever I'm cooking with cheeses, okay? You know, nutmeg has a lot of interesting features. It has some, it has a chemical reaction with the lactose and it balances it off. You know, if you eat too much nutmeg, you will hallucinate. Isn't that wild? So, I'm gonna turn this off. I think this is boiling. Wouldn't y'all say this is boiling? Do we have consensus that it's boiling? Okay, good. All right. Excuse me? All right, I'm gonna pour that right onto the, um, the chocolate. Give it a minute. Stir it up good and just kind of wait a second for it to melt. All right. How many eggs would you use normally if you would just follow the corn? What does it say? It doesn't say eggs in the filling. Oh, that's why we love you guys. Okay, what, let me look at that. You know, it's in the body of the... Uh, yeah, it's in the body, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, one and a half to a pound is what I said. Uh, one and a half eggs to a pound of ricotta. So a large egg would be fine. All right, bottom, top of it. All right. This is the filling for the eggplant or for the ricotta, I mean, or for the lasagna, or anything else, okay? I put salt and pepper. I'm gonna add some fresh chopped parsley. Pardon me. Oh, six minutes. Do six minutes on your phone, please. Okay, I like a lot of parsley. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so I'm just gonna mix this up. All right, I'm just gonna mix this up real good. If I was at my house, I would be using my hands. But, you know, there's people in, you know, some people would, you know, get squeamish if I did that. Okay. I was one time doing a demo for a group of food writers on how to make bread pudding. It's on YouTube, I think. All of our videos are on YouTube, or you can catch us on AOC, our local access channel. Okay, y'all got that? Does that look okay to you guys? Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take my whisk and my chocolate, and I'm just going to combine that. Okay? Now, you see the chocolate is completely uh, 
melted. Is that beautiful? Look how fine that is. That's basically we have ganache. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm going to set it over here so it gets nice and cool away from the range top, okay? How about that? Is that a beautiful sauce? Mm? Mm. Just like the old country. Oh, they're perfect. Oh my God, I'm so in love. Look at that, huh? Isn't that impressive for your friends? Could that have been easier? Huh? Look, these are a little toastier. Pretty? Fun. All right, I'm going to pop my sausage in there. Now, the upper oven is on convection. This is a great KitchenAid product. It has this ball bearing slide on it. So you've got a 40 pound turkey in there. It comes in and out real easy. All right? Great. Any questions? I'm going to set the timer for uh, what's, on, what's in there? Oh, a cake. All right, cool. <laughs> Hello. Y'all ready? Okay, I'm going to dredge here in egg and then in the seasoned flour. Come sa? So you didn't rinse them? I didn't rinse them. That's why I do it in the water. I don't, I don't ever need to rinse them in the water. Okay. All right. My oil's not quite hot enough. So... I'm going, this is the pan. I'm going to make the rolls and then I'm going to bake them. In this, I'm going to roll them up and I'm going to set them in this sauce, okay? So I'm going to put some sauce in here, about a half a cup, okay? Is that gorgeous sauce or what? This sauce freezes beautifully. It's great for pizza, for dipping, for just about anything where you like a marinara. All right? C'est bon? Bon. Okay, go away. I'm busy. All right. I'm going to set this out of my way. Over here. Let that cool off. All right. Y'all got that? Real easy. I'm just going to set it in there. All right? Then I'm going to set it over here. Just for the record, I gave you the recipe card so you'd remember the name of the dish because I don't follow them that well. So. These don't take long. Would you get me one of those trays with the holes? The tray plus one with the holes. Thank you. and switch it out with that. What I'm doing here is I'm infusing my butter with garlic, okay? If you have a fear of garlic, you should probably take one of the other classes. <laughs> All right, I have a little taste over here. I'm going to start with the grape tomato, which I absolutely love. My wife likes to uh, slice them in half. I think it's a pain. But we've been married for 38 years. So we've learned how to adapt. We were free to go in the other room. I really learned how to cook because when we were first married, my wife made something and I said, you know, when my mother makes this, it's really like, and she said, well, good, then you and your mother can do all the cooking. <laughs> Through with that. Done. All right, let's check. That's our cake crying out to be saved from an inferno. <clears throat> I don't have a toothpick, so I'm just using my filet knife. You know, it looks very nice, and I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. I'm going to set them on these cooling racks. Set one here. I'm 
All right. Any questions about that? I'm going to turn these. Then I'm going to go do a couple of steps on the salad while these, while these brown up, okay? All right. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this English cucumber and I'm going to cut it a different way, a way I learned from the cucumber growers of America. I'm going to cross cut into short blocks. <coughs> And then I'm going to cross cut this way and make little pieces that kind of remind us of zucchini. All right? Okay. This knife is either from purgatory or hell. I can't decide. <laughs> All right. Any questions so far? You guys have been great. I hope you're learning something. Good, good. All right. Yes, ma'am. The vitamins are in the peeling. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because Monsanto said they would fortify everything. You know, some of that cereal, dry cereal, you can take a magnet and pull it off the, off the um, it's so fortified with iron. Y'all think I'm lying, but anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Eat to your own demise. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I'm going to switch back over to my rolls and pull that out. All right. It really changes the flavor of the cucumber. You'll be, you're going to be amazed when you have it later. Sorry. Yes, ma'am, I did. Mm-hmm. Okay. There we go. Eggplant's one of my favorite things to eat. It grows very well here. If you've ever had a garden, you know it's very prolific. Last year, what happened? The drought, too much rain. Oh, okay. He didn't tell you. Oh, all right. You didn't have as much as usual, huh? Yeah, you got to watch it. And you got to watch when they price it. Sometimes it's per piece and sometimes it's by the pound. Okay, I'm going to put about a fourth, a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is really a wine. So you can spend as much as you want. You could buy this bottle for $38 or you can buy one for $3. My personal rule is I don't pay more than 17 cents an ounce. Okay, and I'm going to add to that a cup of extra virgin olive oil, two to one, whether it's lemon juice or, or olive oil or, I mean, vinegar or lemon juice or whatever. You know, a good Greek salad is lemon juice and oil, not, not a vinegar. All right, I'm just going to mix that up really well. Now, I'm going to add a little salt to this because the salt is going to masticate the vegetable, get it to open up and receive the dressing, okay? All right. I'm going to put that dressing on the knock. Nah, I'm going to put it on. Okay. Now I'm just going to combine that real well. All right. And just let that smooth out. And, and then I'm going to sprinkle blue cheese over the top of that. Yum. Okay. I'm going to turn these. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The heat came on hot. All right. I'm going to surprise somebody with that one. Okay. It won't matter.
Right, right. Okay, look, I'm gonna put some pecans in here. And just kind of roast those in that garlic butter. <laughs> I love to do it on the skillet because I have never been successful in the oven roasting nuts. Because it either, uh, you didn't get any more olive oil, did you? Okay. Now the thing about roasting nuts is once you get the aroma, kind of like the garlic, you're probably close enough. Does anybody smell the roasting uh, pecan? Any people? You smell it, Marilyn? Well, if Marilyn can smell it, I'd say they're done. All right. Wait, look at this. Oh my God. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna really beat this hard. I'm gonna do the whole Michael Jackson on it. All right. Great. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. On this cheese over here, I'm gonna put these hot nuts so it melts the cheese. Okay, good. And how many you needed? 22. 22, so we need four more. Okay, any questions about that? All right, now to my salad mixture here, I'm gonna add a, this spring mix. I love it, rugula. Um, sometimes it has uh, radicchio, just wonderful mixed greens, baby spinach. And then I like to add to that some romaine. Because romaine, you know, is a much coarser lettuce. We use it when we have a heavy cream dressing like a Caesar or something. Now, the rule on, dress, on, on lettuce is the darker the color, the higher the nutrient. Iceberg lettuce, for instance, 97% water, no food value at all, okay? So, <clears throat> they're not giving you a deal at Piccadilly. All right? Now, there's a rule about cutting lettuce. I don't follow it because I'm cutting the lettuce and serving it almost immediately. Okay, here we go. Get these bad boys out of here. There we go. Looking good. All right, I'm just gonna do this with my hands like my grandmother. Is that gorgeous? Mm, wait till you taste it. Wait till you taste it. No, just put both the plates right there and I'm just gonna dab a little on each one. All right. Yeah, you can do it. Let me get that in there. Make sure you get tomatoes and pecans okay. in each one. Okay. All right. What did she say we needed? 22? 22. This would be 23. Not including you and I. Or Danny. All right. Now, ideally, I could have taken out my... Um, Started over with my browning. Okay. Doing good. How's that salad? Huh? Is that fun? This is finished. Aren't those pretty? All right. We go to the bottom because they're cooler. All right. I'm going to do like this about a fourth of a cup. Come sa, roll it up, and set it in that marinara. Yum. It's the best thing you ever eaten, I promise you. It's going to be well worth the wait, and everything you thought about me in the meantime, you're going to forget. <laughs> right, Sharon? <Yep. laughs> everything you thought, my God, I would never do that. All right. How are we doing, Sheena? The salad's really good. Thank you. Anybody else like the salad? Isn't that fun? I love the balsamic with the blue cheese. 
roasted pecans. Mm. About roasting the pecans? Yeah, that was kind of my off-menu kind of addition. Now, it says feta on the recipe, but I used blue cheese. Feta would jerk work just as well. Some people have a fear of blue cheese. You go, oh, blue cheese. Oh, my God. They, I call that the Cajun disease. Nothing green by mouth. All right. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They ask for an extra vegetable and it's corn. Ooh, shah, that's hot. Spread these out, let them cool a little. Right here, right there, frozen. When you buy them from me frozen, that's what they look like. You thaw them in 20 minutes at 450 degrees and they're ready to serve. Just online, just, just email me and I'll deliver them to your house. Yeah, I'm a carriage industry. You know, they don't have that much anymore. Do I? That's right. It's that. The Fuller Brush Man. Any of y'all seen me on the cooking channel? You saw me on the cooking channel? So do you think I'm legit? You know that word, you've heard Sicilians refer to each other as paisano. That word means peasant. In Sicily was very poor. Uh, economic, uh, economic indicators and poverty sent most of the Sicilians to the United States. An additional 300,000 Sicilians came to the United States in addition to the 300,000 that came to Louisiana. Most of the Sicilians, when they arrived at customs, had never seen their name written. So consequently, a lot of their names were changed. My own family, <clears throat> my great-grandfather's name was uh, Cantonese, which is a name that's around here somewhere. But, um, he couldn't, he had no use of the language and couldn't identify himself and um, they, he had a ruddy complexion, kind of like my man over there in the LSU uh, t-shirt. They called him Russo, which means red in Latin. So that's how we got that surname, which was not unusual for a lot of immigrants entering um, because like I said, they had had an oral tradition, not much of a written tradition, so they had not seen it written. A lot of people were referred to as WAPs. You know, that refers to without papers. Uh, I, wrote, I, wrote a, I read a dissertation on um, Sicilians in New Orleans from 1890 to 1905, and there was a massacre of, of them in the jails. And if you read those articles from the 1897 Times-Picayune, it was almost word for word for the immigration uh, dialogue we're having today. We let, my son and I literally had to look at the date on the newspaper to see when it was. Whether it was then, now, the same thing, you know, they were going to come, they were going to take all the jobs from the blacks, they were going to, um, you know, that's why they, the state of Louisiana recruited them because after Reconstruction, most of the farm workers moved to the industrializing north, or what we now call the Rust Belt, Chicago, Toledo, Pittsburgh. Where did your grandfather get his ruddy complexion? Well, you see, with the, with the conquering of Sicily, it could have been from any number of places. Does anybody know why that's in beeping? What's in the oven? Oh! <laughs> Thank you! Thank God for the beeper! There we go. Beautiful bread. Why don't you go around and give everybody a little... Oh, they've already gotten rid of that. Never mind. We'll put it on the plates with this. Okay, 
We're going to do this. Is that pretty? Beautiful. Okay, we're going to pop those in the oven. Give them 20 minutes and they'll be ready. Okay, little tip. Do you have a cake board? Okay, a little dollop on the cake board. Holds the cake in place. Are the doily. Okay, put it for the doily, then for the cake. All right? We're good? Y'all like that? All right. This stuff is like gold. Mm. It's almost a sin. Almost a sin. All right? Some recipes, sometimes I like to make um, a ganache. You know, and um, which has a little bit more cream, and make a ganache filling for the between the cases. Now, if I'm feeling real creative and I've got lots of time and I'm not doing 27 other things at the same time, I'll slice the cake in half and make four layers from the two. Turn this over like this. I had a cerebral accident in the freezer, so I'm just going to fix it. Cerebral accident, that's a stroke. <laughs> okay. All right. We're good here. Okay. Now we're just going to dollop everything we have, everything we ever dreamed about, every moment that we've ever considered, any kind of icing we ever thought about. We're just going to pile that on there. Oh my God, go find me a rubber spatula. I can't leave a spot in there. Okay, oh God. Oh my, look how easy that ice. Is that gorgeous? It is almost like magic. How about this? I oh Yeah, because I'll make, like Sunday, I have a reception for 75 and I've got to make a cake. I'm going to make the cake this afternoon and then ice it on Sunday. It, it, you know, it, it's immediately going to firm the icing up because if you want it to transport. Now, I will make a cake and put it back in the freezer and ice and it, you know, an hour and a half and it's ready for serving and you can't tell. If you ever bought a, um, a cake in a grocery store, I can promise you it was baked fresh in Boise <laughs> and, uh, and transported frozen. Mm -hmm pulled out and iced with some product that will not melt in the sun. <laughs> That's the test of hydrogenated fat. If it doesn't melt in the sun, don't eat it. Because Monsanto figured out a way for we could have a 30-year shelf life on icing. Seriously. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, girls, brace yourself. There's more. Death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. Now, this is when you realize you could have put more in the middle layer. I really haven't quite got that yet, but I'm working on it after about 5,000 cakes. Most chefs don't either bake or they do savory. Rarely do you have them do both. Oh my gosh. Is that beautiful? Hmm? I just love this. I, I, I just come today to make the cake. All right? Now, is anyone here really a new Acadian? I didn't think so. I, I've been working with your group for a long time. I used to do fashion shows for you guys back in the 80s. Because y'all were always looking for something to do at lunch. Mm -hmm. That still are. Yeah, there we go. How about that? That deserves a hand. There you go. Okay, Sheena, what you think? Thank you. All right. Y'all feeling all right? I didn't mean to frighten y'all. I'm sorry. All right. Here we go, Sha.
I couldn't bear looking at the sink one more time. It's looking better? Good. I'll turn around in a minute. My friend, how much time's left on the oven? A minute. There we go. How about that for timing? Look at you. She's amazing. I don't know why you waited. Thank you, Sharon. We were wondering. All right. How we doing there? Looking good? You know what this needs? This needs... I'm going to go ahead and kill the timer. Oh, the bottom oven was on. Thank you so much. I'm going to add a little crushed red pepper, just so it has a little zest. A little olive oil. Do not tell your cardiologist you were here today. All right? And some Romano cheese. I only have one rule in cooking, and it's that you can never use too much Romano cheese. All right, is that beautiful? All right. Lovely. Now I, as a rule, I like to let them rest a minute or two. And uh, so they kind of set a little, okay? so. While I'm doing this and mixing this, you'll get some um, plates. Everything on one plate, please. Okay. Any questions about anything so far? Are y'all hungry? Yes. Yes. A little coarse salt. We can get rid of this. Thank you. A little more cheese. All right. How about that cake? I, I can't wait to eat the cake. All right. Okay, you've got some sausage and pasta here. So much information without a quiz. Just gonna rest it there. Piece of bread. There we go. Thank you very much. Two breads. We must be close, huh? Oh, okay. Then you need one more plate. Tidy it up, tidy it up. There you go. Okay, this time I'm going to cut the cake. I'm going to cut across the circle and then I'm going to cut this way. I'm going to cut across and then this way. Okay, so I get a piece this big, one inch by three inch. When you order cake from a cake maker, like somebody's getting married, that's what they're selling you a one by three inch piece. Okay, and for the rule, you don't cut cake, you slice cake, okay? You don't want to get in trouble with your cake maker. All right? All right. Well, kind of, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Busted. Can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. 
Let's give a big hand for Sheena. And all she has to put up with. But anyway, remember my, my website is accidentalcooking.com. It's on your menu cards. If you forget, there's, there should be another one, I think, on the packet with the group. Those that were seated in the group seating, there's this that has all of our information. If you get to our website, you'll have complete access to everything delicious. <laughs>